So has the learning curve for mobile app development improved over the last few years? You know, it's gotten much, much better. In many ways, mobile app development you know, started, if you really go back, really go back, back to the days of Brew, BDS, yeah. and kind of the old school systems where people started building mobile apps. Mm -hmm. There was no tooling, it was very rudimentary. And so when I kind of take a look at the long view of mobile app development, mm -hmm. things have gotten significantly better. You know, when Apple released the iOS SDK, it was a major step forward because really of the, uh, some of the innovations they did with Xcode. One of the things I look at really prominently there, which they did, and we've been, I think a lot of vendors have been emulating what that's been, is Interface Builder. Because mm. they took a visual first approach to a lot of app development. You know, and then when user experience became kind of the tour de force in mobile application development, you know, having a visual first metaphor for building these applications kind of changed the game in mm. how you were able to actually think about making mobile apps. So Interface Builder came along, visual first, and then with Android tooling happened, but you know, the Apple kind of really led a lot of the vanguard. When it came to mobile web development, and mobile HTML5 and JavaScript, mm -hmm. I think we're kind of at the beginning stages of that right now, where a lot of the tooling kind of feels a little bit like we were at the Brew and BDS days. You know, very text editor centric, very mm -hmm. not a lot of code intelligence, JavaScript intelligence. But we're getting places now. There's really cool projects out of like uh, eBay open source, such as their VJet plugin, which provides open source um, code intelligence. Sench has got a product like our Architect, which gives you that same interface builder approach. So the learning curve has gotten much shorter, but I think in the JavaScript and mobile uh, web universe, you know, we're just at the beginning stages of that right now. Do you anticipate a time when building a cross-platform mobile app will be as trivial as launching a blog? You know, I think blogs have got this benefit of having, you know, 10, 15 years of development sure. in front of them. Right. And it's a fairly straightforward process mm -hmm. to make a blog. It's, you know, my, my mother's kept a blog in the past, and so, you know, it's basically you sign up for something and you get going. Uh, now, excuse me, I think building a cross-platform app will probably get as easy as building a regular website, okay. which is a technique, I think, and, and a skill that I think the last numbers I saw, five to eight million people in, across the world are able, to, uh, are able to do now. And so, will it ever become as easy as building a blog? I think that's actually probably underselling you know, the value or the complexity and the richness people want to build. Sure. But I think from a technology and technique perspective, an accessibility perspective, yeah, we're going to get there in a much more broad way as the tools, like we talked about, uh, become much more sophisticated. What do you see right now as the primary limitations of HTML5 based mobile apps? Yeah, there's a couple, and you know, I, I, I talk about this a lot and, you know, when, I'm, when I'm talking to customers and things like that. I think there's two major categories. The first category is around kind of visual performance. So, how fast can I move things on the screen, and how fast can things render on the screen? Now, in the web spec, you know, you've got visual technologies like CSS3, WebGL, Canvas, mm -hmm. and you know, maybe a couple others. CSS3 has gotten radically better over the last couple of years in mobile. It's um, now hardware accelerated on many platforms. Chrome for Android is leaps and bounds better than the default Android browser. iOS, uh, CSS3 has always been very good. But that next level, that next big step, is really going to come when we've got very fast Canvas and very fast WebGL, or any mm -hmm. kind of 3D-based, OpenGL, shader-based technology. And one of the big limitations that those will unlock for us in the technology in general will be this very high-end gaming. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there's a lot of people exploring very rich gaming capabilities, and you know they have very good solutions to get that done, but having it platform-wide and ecosystem-wide, that's going to be where um, WebGL and Canvas technology, I think, is really going to be a big one. So I think the first one really is on graphics performance. Mm -hmm. And the second one, and this is one I'm a little less worried about, is going to be high-value or premium content. And so you have things like Hulu and Netflix who are looking to deliver really rich content in a kind of open web and open unfederated manner. And there's a lot of complexities around DRM and things like that, not only from a technology perspective, but from an intellectual property perspective. So that protected content, that super high value content that gets distributed via the open web, as opposed to like a iTunes kind of lock channel, is I think the other big kind of hurdle in HTML5 right now. So graphics performance and really high value content. Other than that, I think the web has made huge, the mobile has made huge advancements in the last you know, handful of years. I, you know, one, one kind of anecdote I like to share is the phone's processors that we have now today, like iPhone 4S and you know, the latest Androids, they basically have the amount of compute power that we had in about 03, 04, somewhere mm -hmm. in that range. And one of the interesting bits about that is look at the major companies that were able to take advantage of the web platform that same generation on the desktop. Google Maps kind of the quintessential first rich desktop application. Sure. So when you have that much compute power, you have this huge class of application that's available. Gaming and rich content, like those are about like 
five, seven, eight years, or whatever the number you might pick away, just if we look at the desktop web as an example mm -hmm. of the platform's evolution from a kind of compute power perspective. All right. So last question for you, and, and shifting it a little mm -hmm. bit. How do you see visual development tools evolving over the next couple of years? Yeah, absolutely. And visual development tools, you know, we kind of we touch on the interface builder, yeah. Sentra Architect, which kind of takes that art what product our company makes, it takes that same approach. No, there's two kind of classes of visual development tools. And again, I kind of like to take a little look at the history of the universe to give us some good guidance. And I look at VB6 as kind of one of the, mm -hmm. the shining examples of a visual development tool. VB6 was Microsoft's crowning jewel in kind of what the early 2000s, right? Most, you know, hundreds of thousands of mid market applications built with VB6, really strong visual first metaphor. And so if we're able to get to that model where VB6-like capabilities become available for mobile and the mm -hmm. mobile web, we're going to be an incredibly powerful place to open the web platform to many, many different developers of many different skill levels. Mm -hmm. Because one of the kind of core problems that we face right now when you don't have a visual techniques, when you have kind of code first, is you limit the total addressable market for you know, the technology set. Right. So JavaScript, HTML, you know, CSS, CSS, you kind of have to be a bit of a jockey. Sure. And so we're looking to see, you know, the future really with, you know, Sencha's visual designer, uh, Sencha Architect. We have an animator tool which is kind of gives you freeform animation capabilities, so you can build flash-like animations on the mobile web. Tools like these, I think, will be really critical to help bridging that gap and, and, and enhance uh, the amount of people who can actually take advantage of the web platform by giving them the visual tools. Right. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.